In this ChatGPT tutorial, we are going to be diving into assigning your chatbot system functions or roles. Now, system roles are one of the most powerful things in ChatGPT that's easy to understand and use. Sometimes all it takes is a couple of sentences in order to morph the chatbot into giving you the responses that you want. You can morph it into something fictional or non-fictional. And that's what makes it so powerful is you can really give it whatever personality you so desire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into ChatGPT and I'm going to show you a couple examples of using a known personality and then I'm going to show you how you can actually create your own personality within ChatGPT and give it instructions on how to respond. So the first thing that's important to input within your prompt is a system function, otherwise known as a system role. So this is what you want ChatGPT to act like when it's giving you responses. So a good way to start off pretty much all of your system functions or roles is to just start by saying act as and then whatever you want ChatGPT to act as whether that's a doctor a lawyer an engineer an accountant you know it can be whatever professional basketball player health trainer the list goes on for when you're creating system functions and you want ChatGPT to respond in a certain way you even have the ability to create your own system functions. And then the next important part of creating your own system role or your own system function within ChatGPT is providing context. So context is very, very important. You know, you need to give ChatGPT that extra information into how you want it to act. You know, how do you want those responses to be coming out? When do you want it to say certain things? You have to list all of this within the context section. And next, the final and most simple step is just adding your mission and your statement at the end of your prompt. Whatever you want ChatGPT to do, this is where you're going to list it at the end of your prompt. This is the way I do my system roles and functions is I always like having my system function first, my context in the middle, and then my mission and statement last. Now, if you like learning in depth about ChatGPT and you're an absolute beginner and you wanna learn how to become an advanced user, then consider purchasing my course using the link in the description or the top end comment where I go much more in depth on how to use this stuff. But now let's get into a couple of examples when it comes to using system functions within ChatGPT. So I'm in a new chat here and I'm using ChatGPT4 because of the reason that there is a little bit more advanced reasoning so it can play that system role a little bit easier and I don't have to worry about it not understanding what I'm saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in my first system role and then we are going to break it down. So it's first important to define what you want the chatbot to be. So that's what we're doing specifically at the beginning of this prompt. I want you to act as an aphorism book. Now that's the main call of ChatGPT. We want it to act like an aphorism book, but now it's important to go a little bit more into detail so ChatGPT knows what do you mean by an aphorism book. It's always important to provide context after you provide your system function or your system role. So we give some instructions here. You will provide me with wise advice, inspiring quotes, and meaningful sayings that can help guide my day-to-day -day decisions. Then we say, additionally, if necessary, you could suggest practical methods for putting this advice into action or other related themes. My first request is, and then we are going to list our request for ChatGPT. Now I actually got this prompt from this GitHub user. So if you guys wanna check them out, they have some very cool prompts and some very cool system functions that you can use as well. So now we can put pretty much any request in here. I'm going to put a silly one for this first one. And I'm going to say my first request is how to tie my shoe. Okay, and now I'm going to send it off. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us some aphorisms that are quite funny. A journey of a thousand miles begins with one single step, or rather, a well-tied shoelace. So it's forming all of these responses now as if it were an aphorism book, and then it goes into practical advice on how we can actually do what we are looking to do. It says, learning how to tie your shoe can seem like a small task, but it is indeed a skill that underlies much of our day-to-day -day life. So it's really going in deep here. And then it says, this task serves as a metaphor for the importance of mastering basic skills before we can move on to more complex ones. If we try to run before we can walk, we might trip over our own shoelace. So this is going very deep just by adding this one system function to ChatGPT. Now, had we not put the system function in here and we just said how to tie my shoe or how do I tie my shoe, the response wouldn't have been like this at all. As you can see, it even gives a nice quote down at the bottom here as an aphorism book would. Let me show you what it looks like when you do not put a system function with this prompt. So if I'm in ChatGPT4 and I just type in how do I tie my shoe and I send it off, 
ChatGPT is not going to generate as fun of a response. It's just going to get straight into some methods. It's not going to give us that aphorism style that we were looking for. So just adding one system function and giving the chatbot a little bit of context into how we want these responses laid out, it did quite a good job at presenting those outputs for us. So now anytime we want to add a new response or we want a new task dealt with in an aphorism book type style, what we can do is we can hit this little edit button up top and then we can give in another request here. So my first request is how to deal with a breakup. Now when we hit save and submit, we have this little carousel up here so we can go between our responses. So it gives us seven aphorisms and then some advice on how we can actually apply those to our life. So the next system function I'm about to show you comes from this GitHub user and this one is very funny. Now the beauty about these system functions is you can have them be as serious as you want or as not serious as you want. So this prompt from that Reddit user is more so on the funny side of a system role that you could give ChatGPT. I want you to act as a drunk person. You will only answer like a very drunk person texting and nothing else. Your level of drunkenness will be deliberate and you will randomly make a lot of grammar and spelling mistakes within your answer. And then it keeps on going on to describe how to act as a drunk person to ChatGPT. And instead of my first sentence is, how are you? I'm going to make my first sentence, what should I eat tonight? With a question mark. And now I'm going to send it off. And just using the system function and providing a little bit of context uh, for uh, what ChatGPT to do, as you can see, it says, hey, pizza. Oh no, wait, I mean sushi, tacos, all good, food. And then it makes some weird spelling mistake and has some emojis here. So it does look like this would be a drunk person texting. This is the power of ChatGPT, is it can formulate these human-like experiences within a chat thread, and you can kind of manipulate that to any way you want. So it's scary yet powerful all in one. And then I can keep on going within this chat thread talking to this drunk ChatGPT. I say, well, sushi sounds kind of good. Should I do that? I send it off, and now ChatGPT is going to generate I'm sure a drunken response. <laughs> so it's making spelling mistakes, it's making grammar mistakes, but it's trying to hold out this conversation with me. We have our role here, we have all of our context, and then we have our mission or what we want it to reply to. Now we are going to be diving into creating our own system function within ChatGPT. And the same principles apply that I showed you in the beginning of the video when it comes to creating an existing to a non-existing personality within ChatGPT. So it's important to follow those to a T. Starting off with an act as statement, giving ChatGPT that system role to play, giving it context on how to play that system role within its responses, maybe even giving an example or two, and then providing your mission slash statement. So we're in ChatGPT and now we wanna create our own system function. How do you want ChatGPT to respond to you when you type in an input? Well, for this example, I want ChatGPT to respond to everything backwards. So I want its sentences to be read from right to left rather than from left to right. So in order to understand a sentence, you have to start at the back and read word for word going right to left. That's what I want ChatGPT to do. I think it's a good example to use because I don't know how to describe that other than to give it a custom system function. So that's what we're going to do. Giving it a custom system function is actually one of the funnest parts in my opinion because you can come up with a funny name for your system function. So what I'm going to say is act as a backwards man. So now we're telling ChatGPT to act as a backwards man. What does that even mean? If ChatGPT heard that right now, it would probably be like, what are you talking about? So that's why we have got to give context and maybe we even give an example to ChatGPT in order to help it understand how we want it to respond to our sentences. So now I'm going to dive in and give it some context. Okay, so now I've given context, you know, I've listed an example of how I want ChatGPT to respond. The example part is quite important within your system role, especially if it's pretty out there. You know, you want to provide an example to ChatGPT of how do you want ChatGPT to respond because it can't really read your mind. So if you just say something as vague as act as a backwards man, it's going to have no idea what to do. So give an example and give enough context in order for it to give the proper output formatting. So I say act as a backwards man. That would be my system function. Then I go into my context, which is you respond to sentences or questions that I give you from right to left instead of left to right. So instead of saying, I am a lucky person, you would say, person lucky AMI. And now that it has the proper context, it knows how to respond to sentences, it knows that it's responding from right to left instead of left to right, 
Now we are going to list our mission. So I'm going to say my first question is, and then I'm going to put a colon. And now whenever I want a new question in a backwards written way, I can just hit that edit button and hit save and submit as I was showing you earlier. What is the tallest waterfall in the United States? So I have my mission now. My first question is, what is the tallest waterfall in the United States? I've given ChatGPT its system role, I've given it context, and now I have my mission in here. And now my prompt is ready to send off. So ChatGPT should take on this custom role that I gave it with the context I provided and provide me with a good response. And it does quite a good job. So I was a little bit confused when reading this at first and I thought I got it wrong, but I think it's right. I'm just having trouble reading it because of this custom system function that I gave ChatGPT. So four words, it says, States United the in waterfall tallest the is Yosemite of Falls. Backwards, it says, Falls of Yosemite is the tallest waterfall in the United States. So it did a very good job. And now anytime that I want to edit this, I can hit that edit button and I can ask it a new question. I don't even have to put my second question is, I can just leave it at my first question is, and I can type in a new question. So what is the largest lake in the United States? And it did a pretty good job. Lake Superior is the largest lake in the United States and it's all backwards. So this is very cool. You can really start to harness a lot of power if you have some advanced output formatting that you're trying to get ChatGPT to use. After providing it a system role and a lot of context with a mission statement, you can pretty much manipulate it however you'd like. So this has been assigning roles within ChatGPT and how you can kind of manipulate the chatbot responses in order to generate completely customized responses based on your situation. So you can formulate your own system functions and tell it to act a certain way and give proper context with a good mission statement. And ChatGPT will do a pretty good job at doing that for you. But you can also just use pre-existing system functions that are already here. What I'll do is I'll leave a link to a ton of different system functions you can use within the description for free. But if you enjoy learning how to formulate different ChatGPT prompts by yourself, then I do recommend getting my course for ChatGPT where you get access to a private group, a Notion template, and a ton of course modules that will help you become a pro at using ChatGPT. Now, this is all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you learned something, and leave a comment below letting me know if you have any questions. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.